Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the Art Power AK Online Talks program. We're delighted to have you here today for the 13th talk in our series. Today's topic is titled, Does Art Have Therapeutic Benefits? And I'm very happy to be passing over to our moderator today, Vivian Chow, an independent art writer in Hong Kong, who will be introducing your speakers and moderating the conversation. Vivian, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rosanna. I hope everyone can hear me okay. Um, well, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Um, today, our discussion topic, does art have therapeutic benefits? Um, well, I think this is, a, this is a very timely and much needed discussion as we're living in these challenging times. And personally, I'm very interested in this topic because um, um, I, 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 do want, I do want to learn uh, from our panelists today, you know, to how, you know, we can um, how we can cope and how we can, you know, heal ourselves through art. Um, so a, a quick introduction to today's, or today's panelists. Um, we have um, Mimi Tong, uh, Head of Program Design and Lead Art Therapist of the Southern Art Foundation. Um, Grace Chang, Director, Art and Hospital. And Kurt Chen, Acting Director of the Hong Kong Art School. So I, I think we can um, talk about this, uh, we, we can approach this topic from various um, perspectives uh, based on, you know, um, all our panelists' professional background. Um, but first, I would like to start with um, some uh, recent or personal stories. Um, I, 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 have a, I have a friend, um, per, a personal friend, this is a, a first, um, the first person I personally know um, who's... Um, uh, who's, who's infected um, with COVID, and um, so it's not just him; it's also his family, and they're all um, in hospital right now. And um, I, I, I'm sending my best wishes, and I also hope that I can learn something from um, our panelists today. How you know how I can help him um, to cope with this uh, major crisis? I mean, of course, I cannot do anything. Of in terms of um, uh, the, the health, uh, physical health, but maybe I can I, I, I can get a few some tips from um, a panelist um, on how to help uh, with his um, emotional mental health. Um, so any um, suggestions, recommendations from Grace, Mimi, <laughs> Kurt? Um, for me, because I also. Ex Experience the same thing, not with COVID-19, but during the lockdown, I was uh, admitted to hospital. So, oh. uh, yeah, so I experienced how, how bad it was because you cannot see your relatives, your families. So you are, um, you are bound to your bed. You cannot walk around because uh, they want to avoid all the infections. And then the only thing you can do is sleep, sleep and sleep. And even your phone. Because because uh, you you only have one phone on your hands and then mm. and then you need others to send you a charger so that you can continue to use the phone every day. So I mean the life is really difficult in hospital, but um, but there are things that you can do because uh, like that time uh, I was admitted to hospital in March, so that is that's already the lockdown. Um, I asked my husband to send me a radio because it's useless uh, battery so I can hear what's happening in Hong Kong at least. And also he sent me some, uh, that's related to my <laughs> profession, he sent me some uh, painting materials so I can draw because I cannot rely on, on any electricity anymore because, because if you are in public hospital, you cannot use any of their plugs or whatever. <laughs> so I, I have no no battery at all. So what I can do is I, I read books, I paint and then things that's the life in hospital. So what you can do is just hope for recovery and then you can get out of this horrible environment as soon as hospital. As soon as possible. <laughs> So uh, for the suggestion, you may, I, I mean, you may send things for reading or drawing or whatever. Radio, uh, radio is a good thing because uh, you, can, you can have it and then you can hear things in Hong Kong. Yeah. 
that's really good suggestions. Thank you. Because um, one of the uh, um, one 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 of my friends' family members um, is is a, a child. Um, oh wow! Yeah. So I think the the suggestion of of sending drawing materials, I think that is really that that's really helpful. I, I will I will do that. Yeah. Or or some reading materials. Yeah. That's. <laughs> That's that. That's that's really that's really great. Um, yeah, yeah. And Mimi, what what um what do you think? What kind of suggestions um do you, do you have? I think as a as a registered art therapist. Well, I guess what just mentioned about there are a lot of ways to help ourselves to soothe and feel less stressful and. And I think art is one, one way, and there are many kinds of arts, like doodling, whether adults or kids. I think particularly a lot of people, they don't have this like training. They feel like, oh, I'm not an artist. I don't know how to draw. And so I think it's the idea of how we actually find our way of expressing ourselves. So any expressive arts can do, like, uh, like music, as long as you are not like causing trouble to other people, of course, and doodling and... You know, you know, find a way to to stay in your breathing. I think when we work with kids or adults, we usually integrate mindfulness, breathing, and creativity alongside. Because biologically, we are trying to make use of um, uh, the breathing and the heartbeat to kind of regulate our emotions. And and mm -hmm. also when we are doing creativity, all there are a lot of biological change or things happening, like the cortisol it's decreased so your stress is reduced and then the increase of blood circulation in the brain so mm -hmm. and also like it will distract us from all these thoughts of oh where is the next procedures where's the test results so all these things are bringing us to this here and now which will help us to at least the moments of time that we feel less stressful or like thinking too much about the future or, or whatever and also there were also another uh, study research about when we look at things that are uh, colorful and bright and and beautiful you you have this increased uh, hormones that is one kind of they call it cyto cytokines which is uh, one one kind of cells that will help us to uh, to fight for our immune system it's like an immune immunity cell so there are a lot of things going on in terms of doing creative uh, process so try not to focus at the end product, whether, okay, I'm a trained artist and, and my, looking, my art is looking good or piece is appealing to others. It's more about uh, you, you have this process um, that can do a lot of work, which you don't realize. Um, so I guess even kids can do that, but you just need some, some suggestion and tools and encouragement and facilitation. Thank then, you very much. Please. And then there is another one that is very uh, effective is uh, to write, to write your what you're happening now. So writing a journal or whatever, because not everyone wants to draw, but how you can use your pen to write your emotion or whatever. Uh, it, uh, it, uh, it's very effective for, especially for patients, because you can write your emotion right now. I'm happy. I'm not happy. I am blah blah blah, and these are the things that uh, you can do it as like a record or whatever. You can see it afterwards or not, but this the whole process is quite therapeutic. Yeah. Um, Kurt, um, can you? Uh, I, I have a question for you, um, but you can can you unmute please? And um, and also to um, to everyone who's attending online, questions are welcome. So just. Um, uh, submit your questions, and then we'll we'll uh, we'll we'll, we'll, uh, we'll try to address them for our conversation. Um, Kurt, I want to ask you. Um, uh, I think a lot, may, maybe some people, um, they want to they they, they feel that uh, I think as Mimi mentioned, they feel that they're not trained artists, and there's there's a it seems that there could be a hurdle for some people who um, to to make the first uh, to take the first step um, to to start, you know making art or doing something creative which is something that they might normally um not uh, they, they normally don't do probably so what kind of suggestions do you do you have for them can you hear me now i can hear you now. Oh, okay yeah. okay sorry uh, 
I, I, I think just a piece of paper and a pen can, can, can already make some art. I think this is um, maybe the most primitive and most accessible way of uh, making a drawing. I mean, this has been done during the very primitive uh, time. People just uh, use their body and interact with the material. But uh, having listened to the previous two friends uh, talking about therapy, I think uh, uh, there are some tiny differences uh, between the, uh, the kind of material you're using. I mean, if you're using clay to build something, your bodily reaction to clay uh, is very different. I mean, the, your, your attainment from this uh, bodily engagement with clay is very different from using a hand, holding a pen, drawing on the paper. So I have to mention that a different form of art may have their own characteristic that may trigger some of the um, emotional response. I think this is a very important. Uh, if you're a sculptor or, or even in painting, uh, we have a different kind of painting. Some abstract painter very uh, expressive, like uh, de Kooning or Jesse Polak. And those people may just uh, just uh, express themselves through some very violent, <laughs> look seemingly violent act. It's like expressive. But at the same time, if you look at the Chinese painter or the very, uh, the so-called fine brush uh, uh, drawing on a piece of paper. You, you have to be very concentrated and the very tiny muscle in your finger really matter of a, re, uh, has a very significant effect on what kind of marks you're making on that right. So this kind of, uh, uh, when, when we talk about uh, art, it, it could be a very bored term. So you, you could just sit down and then, and, and then do meditation. You can dance around. You can just uh, sing a few tunes. I think it uh, somehow help you. But I think different kinds of action and material engagement really do different kinds of effects in your brain, as Mimi has mentioned earlier. So, uh, I, so, so uh, this is some, something that I, uh, when I look at, the paint or the hard work of the different artists. I, I would tend to look at the, the, the own face. You know, the face really, the facial expression or, or uh, uh, for a long time of art practice, you can imme immediately sense uh, the, what kind of art they are making. For example, if a, a very um, introvert Chinese painter, when you look at him, you can already feel very, very peaceful. And especially for uh, when you look at a ceramist or potter, and also, you know, smell the, the kind of uh, connection with the body and the land, and also with the raw material. So this kind of temporary, if you accumulate, keep practicing for a long time, and those kinds of body, material, and the world are being connected. Hmm. So when I talk about the, the, the COVID-19, maybe, maybe if you're in a certain kind of confinement, you just make use of everything that you, you, can, you can make in order to make you happier. Just like Grace has mentioned earlier, radio would be a very important uh, device for, for, for her to uh, keep, uh, keep herself happy, being connected to the outside world. And I wouldn't say, Listening to a radio is a form of art, but it was, uh, nowadays we can say uh, many artists can do sound art too, but you're not making art, sound art, you're just listening. So uh, I think in the process of art, we need to distinguish between the action of uh, whether you are uh, you're expressing some, something through art or you're receiving something through art. So you can have a two, two, two roles to play hmm. in one setting. And um, I want to ask you, what about um, doodling on your iPad? Uh, well, uh, for example, <laughs> that's something that I've been doing, and um, it's it's a very, I mean, it's a it's it's something that I can't really touch. I mean, yes, I do have an I do have a sort of pen. But then um, I don't really. There's no such like material um, that you that, that you mentioned, like nothing that I can touch. But then, um, 
how, how, how does it have like any impacts or is it like different from um, doing, making, or do, do, trying to, trying to be exp expressive and creative with the traditional materials? Yes, of course. Uh, when you talk about the digital device, it, it, it's, it's just a device um, serving as, Im it's, it's just imitating the na nature. You know, every software is trying to imitate the natural material and also the response of the material through the human uh, uh, engagement or, or interaction. For example, if you draw doodling on, on your iPad, so you can, you can uh, uh, have the software let the pressure of your so-called eye pencil uh, uh, to imitate a, a, a oil brush on, on the iPad. But the thing is, the kind of pressure you add on the iPad, I mean, I mean the digital <laughs> device, <laughs> yeah. is uh, very different from the real one. But, of course. You, are, but if you need to be a, a, a real artist, touching the real material in order to, to perform good on a digital device. I mean, I mean, even it's like driving a car. I mean, you, you play the video game, you really have the driving experience. Some people, you know, the real r racer can, can, can play good uh, in a video game too. So because of the, the, the connect, some of the connection is uh, still there. And, and I think most of the uh, so-called digital device is trying to imitate the, the, what happened in the real world. I mean, I mean the, the tactile world. Of course, they're still a long distance, but uh, they're trying to do that to make you feel you are already in the real, real material world, but they are not. I, I think uh, I, I want to echo like how about the the idea of having some digital device. I think in the way of when we are doing creativity, any kind of whether dance or art, the the sensation is very important. This is part of where we are connecting to different different part of ourselves, like the sensation, the, the feeling. So the more tactile, the materials, it actually, it, and it, it actually encourage us to improvise ourselves with our own different part of, uh, we have different elements improvising at the same time. But then if we do not have that materials in hand, then the, the digital device is a substitute. It's like better than none. It also serves a good function, like the people who feel very frustrated if they, they, they can't master uh, a tool, then the digital device is helping a lot of like, you know, um, semi mechanic or, or a partly they have been done by the program or the app. So it's like a, all the dummies can also do it. So it brings out the satisfaction as well. So it's also another part of in creativity, we want some satisfaction, not just the out product, the end product, but then we, we can master something. We, we can manage to do what we want. So I guess that's also another advantage. And, and Kurt talks about um, um, having uh, the different materials. And I think when we were looking into, um, and when, when, when we were trying to encourage people to do art, the one major thing to, to that we want to encourage is we are trying to create something out of nothing. That is creativity, right? from not, nothing to something. And I think that kind of like what we, our situation is, we are so limited, we are bounded, we have no resources, how we can make something out of nothing. So that is more also like a metaphor of how we are coop, cooping with our limitation. Uh, okay, when, so this is like a, a, another kind of uh, mental, mental growth that you can create something with even recycled materials, like we, we work with kids, and in our in our online resources that are at home, we try to encourage kids to find something that doesn't necessarily have a lot of uh, fancy stuff. You can try to uh, find something fun and and meaningful. So so I guess that that's kind of try to serve the serve the purpose. Yeah, I think playing is very important. I mean, playing the the concept of playing with a very very specific purpose is uh, very important. I think. A lot of uh, so-called creativity happen is uh, through aimless uh, action to interact with the material because uh, you don't have, uh, have you, you, you don't have any uh, pressure of uh, making something uh, complete or up to a certain standard. But come back to the question: Is uh, uh, 
you might uh, like to know how can someone who do not have uh, prior so-called art training uh, can still make art. But I think it's, uh, uh, when we look at art, it's not just from uh, so-called um, uh, trying to differentiate the standard of art that we are making. Then art could be very primitive in a way that if you play with a piece of paper, you don't have anything, you don't have a scissor, you can use the finger to tear it. This kind of playing uh, action actually create a lot of uh, surprises. But the thing is, whether we, we are able to observe what we're doing and try to uh, think about the action and, and try to reflect on what we're doing, I think this part is very important. Not just necessarily playing, but when you play, you observe and then you reflect, what, what, what are we doing? So you're having a dialogue to yourself. You're talking to yourself. This kind of self-dialogue is, is a very, very important thing, especially for for for, for art to so-called self-actualization. Um, we have some questions um, from the audience. And um, uh, there's, there's this question from Jessica, I think, uh, which I think we kind of address, but um, anything else, uh, um, our panelists, uh, if you have anything else to add. Um, so the question is, um, the question is, is there a simple art exercise you would recommend for beginners, adults, to try art for therapeutic reasons? Also curious about art exercises to take place in pairs or small groups. Thank you. <laughs> Grace, can you? <laughs> I think so. I, I think uh, to me, I do recommend you use some. Um, if you have an iPad, I do recommend you use iPad to start with, because um, um, I did work with a lot of. I work with a lot of uh, elderly patients. They have a lot of fear when holding a brush, but when when I hand them an iPad and then using that iPad. They, they are too excited, not just with the technology, but how to explore, how to find ways to play with that. So then the image, I mean, the whole image would be very fun because they can use the pen to draw whatever they want to draw. And then they start to doodling. And then we start to talk about uh, what's, what's the meaning of the doodling and blah, blah, blah things. And then they start to focusing on, oh, this is an action of art. And then they try to explore more things in it. So I, I do recommend to find things that you don't have to um, really thinking of an art exercise. That's, that's too much on it because right now maybe you don't have enough materials or whatever. And then the art is a term that seems so humble, so, so, so holy things. So um, I think you can just use whatever you have in at home because right now we are all locked at home. Um, maybe I can share one activities that we um, we've been doing during the pandemic. Um, can I share the screen right now? So we have this. Um, activity book which right now we posted at the Facebook and then this is um, a very simple activity activity books that um, that we share to uh, that all the uh, student can uh, uh, children can can download and play um, we try to use all the things that at home as an idea so that you can use like all the utensils or use your cons or whatever things that you can manage to make it as a creation. So there's one example like this. So we are talking about how to make dust fly. So these are all the tiny things are dust. And then you can only need to use toothpicks and color pencil. Or if you don't have color pencil, just use your pens or anything. And then you just, um, you just put hole on it. And then, and then this is already a very interesting exercise that you can use. Um, I need, oh, I think I maybe I, I have one example of uh, uh, in Facebook, there's a, there's a kid that uh, used the toothpick to put holes on it and then facing the light. That will already a very beautiful uh, light painting that they create. Or 
like this one is um, it's a patient who used to um, go to uh, the uh, day center in the hospital to paint with us. But because of the lockdown, she has to stay in, stay at home. And then she start to try to paint on herself. Um, and then she said, um, whenever I feel sad or I have nothing to do, I just draw. I don't think, I just use my pen to draw. And then for this, I can stay focused and then time flies. I'm very happy after I complete anything, not just a drawing or whatever. Because you see there's a, this is an elderly patient and then she paint all this and then she feel happy. And I think the last, uh, she has a last statement said, um, although I have to stay at home, I can't see all my friends, but I'm happy when I can draw. So I think this is one of the example. You don't have to have any pressure on it. You just draw for yourself. You don't have to share to others. You just want to make something that you want. And then this, uh, this was uh, the situation when I was in hospital. I asked my uh, husband to send me all the materials and then I face it. I, I'm, I'm lucky that I'm facing a very good uh, view and then I can paint. And then, and then as uh, the patient said, I really, I really can't feel the time. It just all, I just focusing on painting and then days gone. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Grace. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then we have, um, we have this other question from an anonymous attendee. Um, I, I, I think it's, this one is quite interesting. Um, so the question says, I work with young adult dancers, bracket free professional, who are dealing with the frustration of not being able to move freely. Aside from yoga or other forms of non-locomotive exercises, what would, you, what would your advice be? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not good at any movement. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I'm not very good at movement too. But then I, I thought of like, how do we work with uh, people with disabilities? Uh, like before, uh, I think uh, maybe Art in Hospital has done some projects. I'm not sure. But then if, if I have some some kids or some people who came here with a lot of different like physical limitation, we, we work around maybe uh, not the whole body, but then like whichever part, like even fingers, or like with some tools to help them to find a way to create. So, so I guess it, it, I, I'm not quite sure whether it's like totally incapable of moving or uh, it has to be some kind of dancing because, because I, I, I look at art in terms of different modalities may be more benefit for people who are used to dance. We can try something different. You know, I'm kind of like a, a anti, conventional <laughs> if she's a dancer oh come try to to sing or, or paint if you are a painter maybe try some some poetry uh, or this kind of thing so to break through something um you already have su such limitation we try something new that is also the strength we are trying to build with that person i would say uh i don't know if i answer the question i i i the thing is i'm not so sure about um the, the question because um, when the question said that um, it's working with an young with young adult dancers dealing with the frustration of not being able to move so I I guess it's a physical things it's not a mental thing so if it is a physical thing just like Mimi said uh, maybe there's some tools that can help um, the other advice is I'm, I'm not so sure if it's the physical things um, is it um, is it, is it really a, uh, is it really needed to, I'm not sure, sure because uh, we need some medical um, advice. If this is the right stage to really make the dancer move. Or if, because <clears throat> um, cause sometimes um, we're facing some patients that um, we have to know their physical situation and then we assess and then what kind of things that we can help. So like for us, because um, uh, we usually do uh, uh, visual art things. So if uh, with the doctor, uh, with medical advice, and then um, some uh, patient, they need to move that 
with our helps. So we have some like tools, like uh, some banded pencils or whatever to help them, um, which focusing on the motor skill of, uh, of the patients. But if it is for the, um, can, can this attendee give us more information so that we can know how to answer, answer it? Yeah. Um, I, well, I guess it's the same um, attendee. Uh, I, I think there are a couple of um, additional, I think some more additional information. Um, I guess he or she is referring to um, these um, uh, dances, young adult dances. And um, so dance is, is, dance has always been their, their, their form of expression um, of creativity. But then because they're stuck at home, so they're not able to move um, the way they are used to in mm. the confined um, spaces in Hong Kong. I mean, uh, in a tiny flat, uh, so they can't okay. really dance like the way they do in, in a studio, um, I guess. And mm. I, I guess the attendee is wondering, you know, what kind of, um, uh, what could be um, the alternatives? That's very interesting. I mean, I mean, if I'm a painter, if I don't have a big paper or, or canvas for me to paint, I paint small. And if I am a dancer, if I don't have a studio for me to just uh, do the normal dancing, then I then I I will see this very tiny area. I mean, the room, the tiny room, as a challenge to develop some dancing that fit for that that space. So body and space is very important for the dancer. But you need to use your uh, creativity to imagine what kind of uh, um, action. Or, or, or dance or body movement can be performed in such a kind of limitation. It really go back to what Mimi has uh, uh, expressed earlier that uh, artists are always faced with uh, limitation and see the limitation as the, as the um, key for creative thinking. I think this is very important. If you can dance with your body, dance, you can dance with your finger, or even use your, your, your um, smartphone to record some movement or anything of your body. So I think even with your finger, with your hand, you can dance. So I, think, I, I don't think it's about, you're talking about the, the normal practice of your dancing in a normal place that you practice, and now you are now being taken away of this kind of privilege of having such a, a, a normal studio. And you need to make something. You need to think about something to make yourself enjoyable and also express your creativity through kind of limitation. I think this is, if you are a real artist, I think this is your responsibility to, to react to this kind of limitation. This is too, oh, my, my, I'm not a dancer, I just, uh, just if see it from um, artist perspective. Great, thank you very much, Kurt. I think um, I, I, I think the answers and suggestions that uh, from the panelists are they've been they, they're quite helpful and um, and also they help us you know to think out of the box, especially at, uh, you know during challenging times like this. And um, so we have another question from um, another uh, another attendee. Um, the question is, I read about art can help for autism spectrum disorder because they think in pictures or refer to as visual thinking. Do Mimi and Grace have any case study or experience on that and how this help um, communicate with them? Oh, okay, I, I did not prepare any case to present today, so I guess I can briefly share how, yeah, it's very true, the uh, ASD uh, friends, they have this very strong uh, ability in the visual part of their brain, and so a lot of times they don't communicate verbally, and so the visual aids is one way to, to communicate with them, so a lot of times we, we use visual cards, and then they, they can actually look at the visual cards more effective than I talk to them like 10 times. And in the same way, when they create, they are actually communicating their thoughts and minds and, and everything. So we don't try to kind of ask them to explain too much because they don't. They already explain in a nonverbal 
ways. So I, I, I think this is how we are trying to, I, I think that's why when we work with special population and with special needs, we have to be trained in order to know how to read the language. And then you have, we have to be very experienced or very passionate about art as our language. If we do the creation ourselves, we, we know what it might mean to us or to that people. So our own experience is part of our, our tools to, to, to decode or somehow kind of decode that communication. And a lot of time we have to facilitate them in a nonverbal way to communicate with us. So I, I guess it's kind of tricky because it's really like a, a lot of skills and, <laughs> and practice. Uh, I don't know if I can really explain to uh, this uh, panel, uh, this attendees, uh, um, uh, do you guys have other example or sharing? Um, and I think as long as they have a way to communicate, it's also helping them to, to regulate their emotion because a lot of time when we got angry or get pissed because we have some feelings we can't went out or we're gonna feel misunderstood or we feel wrong or, you know, these kind of feelings also uh, stack up with many people in particular if they cannot communicate with people or being misunderstood by people or families and friends and so they have all these emotions so this way of as long as we find a way to communicate non-verbally it's also helping a lot uh yeah so grace is that you have something um, i think for asd friends um they are not just visual thinking or or things because um i think there's one important thing is um you need to observe you need to be with that um asd friend because uh, sometimes uh, some ASD may be very good at uh, visuals. So they paint and then they keep on painting and then you look at the painting and try to decode that. Some they don't. Some maybe they just uh, doing some normal thing and that is the thing that they would repeating doing. And then you have to from, from that repeating things to take out what he or she want to tell you. So I think the first uh, thing is to observe because um, like Mimi said, if we really have to have a very professional way to do it, you have to learn a lot of things. But if, if he or she is your family members or if it's a friend of you, then you have to really get acquainted to and then to observe their actions because you know, it's their action to show what they, are wanting, what they want to tell you. I think this is a uh, this is a tip that I, I've been using right now, and then I think uh, only be patient, observe, and then uh, learn their way to communicate, and then try their way of communications, and then these are the things that uh, can help you with. Yeah, thank you, Grace. I think that you mentioned a good point uh, about the ASD. There are many spectrum, there are many mm. variations. So some are very sensitive to sound. Some are very sensitive to their sensation. They don't like to touch anything wet or messy. And, and a lot of art materials are quite messy. <laughs> so which kind of materials we're going to offer is very important. So these are all the training about understanding uh, this group of friends. So before we can try to, uh, before we try and, and work with. Mm, great. Um, and that's they're all very um, helpful. Um, helpful advice. So we have another question from Christy. The question is, Hong Kong people are always so busy that many would say they don't have time to do art. Do you have any suggestion of art activities that do not take up too much time or can even be done at the workplace? <sighs> art at the workplace. <laughs> Kurt, Kurt, you answer that. <laughs> Actually, actually, if you cannot cook, then you consume. <laughs> right? I mean, if you if you are not able, you don't have the time to 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 make art because art is really time consuming. I know this is uh, very normal. You need to very you need to enjoy making art in order to make it. Uh, if you can make art, just just I think you you can just be a good I mean, audience to find a good art to appreciate. And if your desire accumulates to a point that you want to engage in art making, then you will naturally make it. No matter how busy you are, I think you will, you will start by it. Because uh, normally, if 
my from my own experience, I normally if I just uh, after seeing, uh, uh, for example, seeing a, a good exhibition, I will be very very eager to go back to my studio to start some work. This is, of course, I'm in the field, but I'm thinking if your 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 so-called art experience accumulate to a point that and and very specific kind of art you you really like, then you start making it. No matter uh, uh, how busy you are and uh, and uh, how I mean the, the resources is not quite um, uh, uh, accessible nearby, you will still find 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 ways to, to do it. Because there's so many so many kind of art. I mean, for example, conceptual art, body art, uh, live art. You don't even need material. You just participate, use your own body, and then you can do some very weird thing in your office or at home. And uh, uh, just to, to, to be honest to yourself and, and to express yourself, you have no audience, but you're still expressing. And I, and I also think that um, maybe, maybe it's a, there's a, 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 mindset, uh, a mindset thing, because um, uh, like when, people, when people think that, okay, oh, the people just are too busy, they don't really have time for that, but I thought, that the whole point of um, uh, trying to get the most, um, get the therapeutic, the so-called therapeutic benefits out of art is to set set aside a certain amount of time to do something different from your daily routine. Um, am I interpreting this um, correctly? I, I really, if you're really busy, why bother on other things? I mean, it's the first thing. I mean, I mean why, why art is that important for somebody who do not, you haven't started yet. I mean, art is like your health, okay? Somebody's always tell you that you need to do exercise for one hour or at least uh, 15 minutes. But you still have a lot of excuse not to do it. Right, you still survive. So just let your body come to a point that not to exercise, and then you start to do it. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't encourage anyone to say art is a must in your life. I would say if you don't have time, okay, just busy on the thing that you really need time to do. And once if you find you have something you're lacking in your life and you identify it. The, the, the question is you don't have the so-called art element in your life, then you start it. So I don't, need, I don't think you need to really uh, force yourself to, to be an art lover or, or to be an artist, no. And, yes. I, and I also think that, because um, uh, the phrase Hong Kong people are always so busy, this is already a norm. So um, I also don't understand why you have to do art, because uh, um, if we are talking about therapeutic means for that, so I have to do art, there's uh, many other ways. Because mm -hmm. for, for therapeutic means, you can either create art or appreciate art. Mm -hmm. So you can take the appreciate art at a, a side that um, you want to participate in. Um, I think this, uh, this is, um, like Kurt said, art is not a must, but art can really enhance your life and make a better well-being. Um, so, just wait, appreciate, enjoy art, and then if you have time and if you are ready, then create. Just that simple. Right. I can also add something. Actually, we, it's actually one idea from Kurt. The other day, we had this casual talk. Uh, uh, you pick one artist that you really like or one painting that you really like. You imitate that painting and then you try to... And then you start to uh, realize this artist, maybe you, you start to know his background or her background and then why he's doing that art. So you are trying to connect with some meanings from this artist and then we eventually it, it will be your own process as well. So that could be one way <coughs> of starting. Uh, I did a lot because uh, that is how I, I kind of felt understood by we connect with the artist. He is experiencing such kind of emotions and then I am actually also going through by doing that process. And then another thing is, I think a lot of people, they, yeah, uh, what just Grace and Kurt mentioned, I totally agree. If we have no appreciation 
at the first, it's very hard to start the second step. So I guess we, we need to have that belief in art as our part of our life. And I think, I, I think a lot of people, they don't really know how to start with if they don't have training. So uh, there are a lot of materials online that you can kind of uh, sh uh, start with, like with some structure and instruction. So then you feel like you know how to start with. And, and we try to select some materials and resources on our uh, art at home platform and then these are mostly for kids but then we also design those for the parents and child to work with so the parents can actually look at them first and these guidelines and some some uh, crafts they start with something light to start with and then maybe they can go more so there are things they can check out <coughs> i guess two people need some some tangible demonstration or uh, structure probably but i guess the first step is how do you appreciate and then do you have a favorite artist or favorite art piece that or favorite materials you you feel that like you want to try that kind of drawn to where you you will go further go deeper and become part of your routine i guess to add on that maybe is a uh, that is possible you know, to do a combination of um art appreciation and journaling well um for example i write and um if you uh, if you if someone who is not familiar with actually you know making art maybe the first thing that people can do is to look at art and um and journal your feelings that you know in response to a to to a painting or a, a work that you've seen either you know, in in real life or um online and that could be a that could be a good starting point right mm -hmm. sure mm -hmm. is okay. yes yeah, sure yeah i think it just starts with the thing that you're most familiar with you don't have to use us as a first term just grab whatever you have because i i see there is an attendee <clears throat> said that um this extended period is extremely challenging because mm. we because we all know we are not just being knocked down for one day for months already so what we can do art is something that you can and there is also million things that you can too so try to i think there's one thing maybe it's because hong kong people are so busy you don't find your own interest try to start to find your interest maybe it's not art it's music dance or whatever just just try to grab whatever you can uh, i mean through online or whatever because you can't go out <laughs> <laughs> Um, <coughs> and, so and your a, family yeah. it's okay yeah and, and you, your family so some some playful thing to start with and and to to stay connected because i think the the other challenging the other challenges we are still locked down and we don't communicate with friends or seeing friends as much as we want and the social needs is being so uh in need and crying for some connection so how how and then actually art or some kind of art form or whatever playful medium can be a way to to build that connection um and then to start with is, is someone in your family or at home you're stuck with <laughs> we're stuck yeah. with. <laughs> but we are actually and then we, when we were doing the art at home program we actually have a lot of kids they 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 share how they start to have more time with their families and then they realize and then they have more interaction with the families for our tools so that's another way of how they can rebuild some um, bonding and relationship somehow um, mm -hmm. because of something more playful they don't usually do in an in a normal uh, situation mm. great okay um we have um we have quite we still have quite a few questions um uh, so we have one from margaret <clears throat> do you have any advice on how people can create <clears throat> a psychologically safe space for art making if they're confined in an unfamiliar slash public space such as a hospital ward um i think this is uh, quite difficult to say if you want a psychological safe space that means that, that there are places that you have to make it really um, mentally safe that means that uh, maybe there are something that you can do is bring some some materials or some 
like uh, furniture or whatever things like a cushion or whatever that that uh, that the attendees are, is uh, familiar with because uh, if it's public space it's really difficult to make it psychologically safe um, I don't know maybe do you have any idea for that I'm still thinking <laughs> <laughs> okay yes I Psychological, it really depends on personal. Uh, different people have different needs. I mean, the 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 the, the scope of yeah. space, the safety, because maybe personality. I mean, personal, no one will peek on my thing, or is it quietness, or is it like the temperature of the room, the lighting? These are a lot of different things that could create that psychological safety. Um, and also, um, uh, and I think usually the psychological safety that comes to me would be uh, feeling people would comment or people would uh, say something about what I'm doing or they say, oh, you, you are very good at art. Oh, can I see? So, so that kind of <laughs> uh, stop, stop me right away because I really want to have some personal time. Um, I think in a public place, it's really hard, but then I guess you, you, if you try to find a time that is less people coming in for the checkups, procedures, uh, and then some, you just, just great mention how, how to bring in something that you feel these, uh, this space you create can make you feel more comfortable. Um, uh, and tune down our, our expectation. Our expectation of safe place is definitely not that kind of safety anymore mm -hmm. but relatively safe <laughs> so like manage our expectation properly so she, I, uh, I do not have too much to yeah because for in. margaret she <coughs> used uh, the example hospital wards because for hospital what usually there is nothing in it i don't know if uh, if uh, if it is good to make it more homely that will make you more safe or whatever it, it depends it really depends but uh, usually it's to make a place, because for hospital, you know, it's all white and then all bland. And then it seems that you're going to a place that you are facing many procedures. But if you want to make it more, more welcoming, then you may, because we work with some hospitals, they want to make the place more welcoming, like a home that will make people feel more easy. I don't know if this can help them to uh, help to answer this question, but these are some of the ways that can do, but it really depends. I just suddenly came up one thing that's very important. I totally forgot. Uh, <laughs> it's the, the psychological uh, state of one person when, when we are just casually doing art, I think it's usually fine. But then if someone is very vulnerable, emotionally, psychologically, not very stable, uh, and then she, maybe she is referencing something online that is coaching her to do art and then try to reflect and how, how are you feeling? You know, those kind of things I might not suggest to do it in a public place or without someone to kind of hold your support, emotions or support you and then you're doing it alone in a public place, which is not quite suggested, I think. I, I don't know if you see what I mean. Some, because we have so much resources online that will encourage you to do art and then other than art, there might be more out of it and then you know what I mean. So so I guess those are kind of creating some uh, issues that if you, you, you feel you feel at home you you know you can call someone right away or you have someone at, at home to, to to say a few words to share about oh I just did some art and I, I feel blah blah blah. But then in a hospital you can't have no one to talk to and you, you're not allowed to talk on the phone maybe and that may not be a psychological safe place, I would say. I think hospital can never be a psychologically <laughs> safe place, no. Yeah, it's challenging. It's never, <laughs> ever, because so many uh, not happy, I mean, you're looking at different patients. Unless you're, you're in, in, in the uh, first class ward, that you have your own room. And then you bring all your belongings uh, in your room and then make the, the, the room uh, like the home. But one thing is, um, I think a lot of people are, has already um, practiced it, is uh, uh, music, headphone. I think if you wear the headphone, I think you're, it's a very immersive experience that can totally change your perception about the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, this is the only thing that even you 
hear the music and you travel travel on the bus travel a long time, you still find the time pass very very fast. So um, I'm I'm thinking about VR, you know, I have own and all these kind of things. It's like uh, blind your perception or separate your perception with the outside world with a very simple device. But does it really help? I, I, I don't think once you do know that you're in the hospital ward, I think it's uh, very difficult to, to do so. But mm -hmm. I must also acknowledge uh, those uh, advices from Mimi and Grace. Well, they, they might help, but to me, as a, you know, as an outsider, I think it would be very difficult to do so unless you have a, a very, you know, uh, digital gear like a uh, uh, game or headphone, uh, listen to your favor favorable music. So, uh, this is the thing that I can think of. Hmm. Right. Okay, so we have, um, well, less than five minutes and um, oh, wow. let's try to answer the nice. last uh, let's try to answer the last question, and I think this is a very good um, uh, question to um, conclude our talk today. Um, so this is from um, Sharas. Am I saying the name correctly? Um, okay, talking about therapeutic effects, what outcome measures all of you would commonly use? Outcome measures, I think like how... I think I guess that means like how you, how how you evaluate the um the the therapeutic effects or you know how effective it is. Mimi, you have some idea. Uh, this sounds very very practical and academic. <laughs> <laughs> when we talk about outcome measures, it's all about like our research. Uh, I guess we, we look at what kind of population and what is our goal to, to work with and then we set the goals and then, and then we try to account, change, uh, look at any uh, measurable changes. And then, so I think it's really bored because it depends on what kind of goals we would want to set with the therapeutic effects from like stress reduction or whether it's a self-actualization, we talk about whether it's a... Uh, uh, you know, trying to uh, increase some coping skill, like, or like increasing creativity, that's many areas that contribute the therapeutic effects. And I guess there's a different aspect and level. And in terms of therapeutic, uh, in a daily basis, or like in a clinical way, they, they, they could have like different layers of uh, items that we can as as assess and then try to look at the changes. So so do I answer the question? <laughs> um, um, for, for us, um, um, we always use pre and post comparison. Um, usually um, there is a series of workshop and then at the first uh, workshop or when we start the workshop, we will start uh, asking uh, what's your mood today? How, how do you think your emotion is? And then when it ends, we will ask them again. So this is a simple way that you can have a list, a little bit uh, measure on uh, is, is, is this a therapeutic enough workshop that you've done? Um, and others, like Mimi said, there, there's tons of things that you can do for these kind of measures. And then there is another question that I really want to answer quickly because I see there's um, well because I see there's uh, attendees talking about elderly homes I know it's very frustrating now and then um, if uh, the attendee is some carer or whatever I think there's one one uh, quote that I want to say that uh, it helps um, is from Forest Nightingale wrote in 1860 the book is called Nooks on Nursing and then she said people say the effect is only on the mind, it is no such thing. The effect is on the body too. Lead to as we know about the way in which we are affected by form, by color and light, we do know that and theirs have actual physical effect. Variety of form and brilliancy of color in the objects present to patients are actually means of recovery. I think um, what is said is talking about form, color and light. 
I know it's really difficult to do anything right now in elderly homes because we cannot um, get in touch with. But if there are carers, I think um, like music, like lighting, if, uh, if there are times that they can see the sunlight, if there are times that they can see different colors, or even different colors of fruit, that may help. I think these are things that, that can somehow cheer some elderly up when they are in elderly home. That's what I can contribute, yeah. Thank you. Um, Grace, so, Kurt, do you have any... Um... I, am, I don't think I can, I'm qualified to answer this, but if I see all my students are, are patients, then... <laughs> Outcome measure. Outcome measure would be the cost evaluation to be distributed at the end of the term. And they would let me know, you know, how, how whether they benefit from my teaching. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you just mentioned, you just remind me of my, my, uh, one of my, my study of uh, mixed media. <laughs> where our where you major, talk. <laughs> <laughs> Major assessment would be problem solving. So we also work with kids a lot about how do they solve their problems in their own way, the creativity. And that could be one way of outcome measure. How are the kids is doing at the beginning and at the end? How are they able to independently find a way to solve without keep asking or trying? They were able to experiment more, bold to try things. These are all some other kind of some very uh, uh, important uh, measures or observation of changes and, and growth. Mm, okay. And um, I hope, uh, I hope our, our audience today um, find today's talk um, very useful. And I have learned a lot. And um, so thank you very much for joining us today. And thank you, uh, Mimi, Grace, and Kurt for sharing your insights and tips. and um, so hopefully we'll um, see each other very soon and, um, and stay tuned for the next Art Power Hong Kong talk. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for thank joining you. us. Thank you, Vian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.